Hello and welcome to Oryx Garage. My name is Kai and this is my 2017 Toyota Tacoma. On this playlist I'm going to be showing you some maintenance tasks I perform on my truck as well as some install videos and product modifications. In today's video we're going to look at how I rotate my tires and why. Please note, I'm not a licensed mechanic or an engineer. I just want to share some information that I've learned and show how I take care of my truck. The purpose of rotating your tires regularly is to make sure that they get worn evenly over their lifespan. I rotate my tires every 5,000 miles. This helps to prevent them from wearing out prematurely. There are many ways this can be done. However, as demonstrated here in this diagram, I move the rear tires to the front and the front tires are moved to the rear, but also to the opposing side. The reason I do this is that the front tires get a lot more abuse as they are doing the job of turning the car and therefore get a lot more strained friction. Moving these tires to the rear allows that abuse to be even out over the next 5,000 miles. I also move them from one side to the other as this changes the direction in which the tire engages with the road. This again helps to spread the wear of the tire on the full tread. For this job we're going to need some tools. Most of these are standard tools that come with the truck, except for the jack stands. But we're going to need a jack to jack up the truck. We'll need a wrench to remove the lug nuts. And then we'll also need some jack stands to hold up the truck while we're moving around to the other corners of the car to remove the other wheels. You need at least one of these, but ideally two, so that you can use one while you're using the jack as well as a backup. Also, if you have special nuts or have a key on your lug nuts, make sure you have that available as well. These are the basic tools that you need to do the job. However, there's some more specific tools you can use to make it easier. I'm going to be using my Pro Eagle 2 ton floor jack. I'm going to do a more in depth review on that when I go over my recovery gear, as this is also the jack that I take with me when I go off roading. I'm going to be using an impact gun to help move and put the nuts on a little bit faster. I'm going to use the breaker bar to loosen the lug nuts and then we have a torque wrench to make sure that all the lug nuts are installed to the recommendation. Also a little chair makes it a lot easier. The reason I am starting the tire rotation at the front is that the wheel that I start with will remain in the air until the last wheel is available and it is a good idea not to have both rear wheels in the air at the same time as these are the wheels that are held in place by the handbrake and lifting them off the ground would allow the car to roll freely. So with that being said, I'll start by making sure that the handbrake is on. Okay, to start the process, we'll make sure that the jack is in place. And we'll start jacking it up until we can see that the weight is being held by the jack. We won't lift it high enough for the tire to leave the ground and we will first break free the lug nuts. are broken free, we can lift the car up until the tire leaves the ground. You can now see that the wheel is off the ground and moving freely. Now we should start by placing a jack stand under the car. And now we can remove the remaining lug nuts. Now that all lug nuts are out, we can take the wheel 
off of the hub and move on to the next place. Now we can lower the truck onto the jack stand and move to the next corner to remove that wheel and install this one. I'll play a fast clip of me doing that with all the other wheels and then I will show you the install process when we get the last wheel ready to install on this hub. in place. We have the rotators, the other tire, other wheels, and now it's time for the last one. So what we want to do is line up the holes with the studs and then lift the wheel onto Come down a bit. There we go. Line up the studs. Get the wheel nicely positioned onto the hub. And then hand tighten the lug nuts back onto the studs. We don't need to tighten them, we just want to get the thread started. Once you've got the thread started in all of them, you can slowly work the lug nuts back on. I like to go in a star pattern, going across, making sure that each nut gets put on evenly, and that the wheel positions itself well on the hub. There we go. Once they're nice and tight, I want to use this opportunity to feel if there's any play in the hub or in any of the ball joints to make sure there's nothing wrong. Everything is going well. At this point, we'll remove the jack and we can lower the Slap back onto all wheels. And now lastly, we want to make sure we torque the lugs back down. We'll 
do this in a star pattern as well. And there we go. Once you're done rotating the tires, you need to use this button down here to reset the tire pressure monitoring system. And then make sure the car's on but not running. And then push and hold that button until the light flashes three times. One, two, three. This will <clears throat> reset the tire pressure monitoring system. It may take a couple of minutes, maybe even 10 to 15 minutes for it to reset. That brings us to the end of our video for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. For additional content or some more information, please see the description below. Get up here and explore, but don't forget to tread lightly. Cheers.